Hello, and welcome to the North Central Texas Council of Governments public information meeting for the Dallas to Fort Worth High Speed Transportation Connection Study. During this presentation, we will cover many topics related to the study. These topics include methods to participate by asking questions or submitting comments, a project overview, and the project's background will be provided, a listing of possible technologies available to travel on the possible alignments within the corridor, and ways to stay informed about the project will be provided. There are two primary ways to provide comments or ask questions during the study. The first is to use our online comment form at www.nctcog.org forward slash dfw hyphen hstcs. The second is to mail questions or comments to dfw hyphen hstc study at post office box 5888 Arlington, Texas 76005. Please take the time to review the project information and provide comments. The next section will discuss the project background and overview. The primary project objective is to evaluate high-speed transportation technology options between downtown Dallas and downtown Fort Worth. This includes both analyzing alignment and transportation mode options between the two cities. The objective includes finding ways to connect the Dallas-Fort Worth region to other proposed high-performance passenger systems in Texas. Also, the project will investigate ways to enhance connections to the regional transportation systems, including automobile, bus, rail, bicycle, and pedestrian networks. An additional objective is to obtain federal environmental approval to design and implement the project. The stated objectives will be analyzed in the study as shown. This area is generally bounded by State Highway 121 and State Highway 183 to the north, Interstate Highway 35E to the east, Downtown Fort Worth to the west, and United States Highway 287 and State Highway 303 to the south. As mentioned earlier, the study objective is to provide a connection to other proposed high-performance transportation systems. This project, highlighted in orange, when complete, would connect the proposed Dallas to Houston high-speed rail, highlighted in gray, to a proposed high-performance system traveling south from downtown Fort Worth, highlighted in purple, to areas in central and south Texas. The Dallas to Fort Worth high-speed transportation connection study is divided into two phases. The first phase will analyze all reasonable alternatives regarding alignment and travel technology. The wide range of alternatives will be pared down to a small number of recommended travel technologies and a small number of alignment options through a multiple level screening process to be further analyzed in phase two. The second phase will be an engineering and environmental analysis as prescribed by the National Environmental Policy Act. The second phase will include conceptual and preliminary engineering tasks. The study will also include financial and project management plans. Phase two will conclude with a decision by the federal government regarding next project steps. Staff anticipates the first phase to take approximately 12 months and conclude in spring 2021. During the first phase, there will be three opportunities for the region to participate in the study through public meeting events. These events are currently scheduled for September 2020, December 2020, and April 2021. The Phase 2 schedule indicates beginning the work efforts in early summer 2021 and concludes in late spring of 2023. This 24-month schedule includes two primary public engagement events in early fall 2021 and late summer 2022. As always, questions and comments are welcome throughout the entire project study. One of the initial tasks for this type of project is to develop a description of the project purpose which addresses the project objectives. The preliminary project purpose is to connect downtown Dallas and downtown Fort Worth with high-speed intercity passenger rail service or an advanced high-speed ground transportation technology to provide an alternative to travel by automobile to advance the state high-performance rail transportation network, to support economic development opportunities in the Dallas-Fort Worth region, and to enhance connectivity. 
Enhancing connectivity occurs at two levels. One level encompasses the local transportation networks like the DART light rail system or the TEX rail system, local bus systems, the roadway system, and bicycle and pedestrian systems. The second level of enhancing connectivity is coordinating connections to other high-speed transportation systems in Texas, including the Dallas to Houston high-speed rail system and a planned high-performance transportation system traveling south from Fort Worth to Central and South Texas. One reason for the need to connect the Dallas-Fort Worth region to other metropolitan areas is the region's population and employment growth. The Dallas-Fort Worth region's population is expected to grow by over 50% between 2018 and 2025 to over 11 million people, while employment growth is expected to be over 46% to more than 7 million people employed by 2045. Other metropolitan areas within the Texas Triangle Mega Region anticipate very similar population and employment growth over the next 25 years. With the high population and employment growth in the Dallas-Fort Worth region comes increased travel congestion and costs associated with more traffic congestion. The amount of miles all travelers in the region drive is expected to increase by over 56% by 2045. This increase in total miles traveled results in a 59% increase in travel time throughout the region. Travel time increases due to traffic congestion are expected to be the worst in Tarrant and Dallas counties, with Dallas County travelers expected to experience a 72% increase in travel time above current levels by 2045. The annual cost of the expected congestion to all travelers in the region is estimated to rise by 125% by 2045. The need for connectivity to other metropolitan regions is focused on the Texas Triangle mega region, as shown here. The Texas Triangle is made up of several large metropolitan regions, including Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. High-speed transportation is optimal for connecting large metropolitan regions within a mega region compared to commercial air travel due to the strategic distances between regions and additional travel time needed for commercial aircraft. In addition to high population and employment growth in the DFW region, the state of Texas is growing rapidly as well. Population in Texas is expected to grow by almost 38% to just under 41 million people by 2045. This means employment growth will also be fast-paced. Employment in Texas is expected to rise by more than 44% to about 26.3 million people by 2045. With all of the expected growth in population in the Dallas-Fort Worth region and within the Texas Triangle, and the anticipated traffic delays caused by congestion, more and faster travel choices are needed. Additional travel choices will increase connectivity to, from, and within the Dallas-Fort Worth region and will lessen demand on the region's roadways. Additional travel choices will also allow for more reliable travel times and lead to better air quality within the region. There are many options and possibilities for the Dallas-Fort Worth region to provide the travel choices needed to reduce anticipated travel delays and associated costs while providing needed connectivity to, from, and within the region. There are several high-speed transportation technologies or modes of travel to be examined for their use to meet the region's travel needs. These modes of travel include conventional passenger rail trains similar to the Trinity Railway Express or Amtrak trains, higher speed trains, excuse me, higher speed trains which are faster than conventional trains but slower than high-speed trains. Higher speed trains are similar to the Amtrak Acela service between Washington, D.C. and Boston. High speed trains are not currently operating in the United States, but are operating in many other countries. High speed rail trains are the passenger trains proposed for the Dallas to Houston system. Magnetic levitation, or maglev for short, is a relatively new high speed train technology. While similar to high-speed trains in many aspects, maglev trains hover over the tracks using very strong magnets instead of relying on steel wheels to contact a steel rail to stay on track. Maglev trains are currently in limited operation in other countries. The newest high-speed transportation technology is Hyperloop. 
Hyperloop technology incorporates a passenger or cargo pod moving at speeds over 650 miles per hour in a near vacuum tube. The concept is similar to the vacuum tubes used to transfer transactions at a bank drive through lane. In addition, other modes of travel will be examined as they become known. If you know of any additional transportation technologies we should examine during our study, please let us know by including this in your comment form. Each of the technologies or modes of transportation to be examined has various design and operating characteristics. These design and operation characteristics include top speed, the type of guideway or tracks used, peak headways, meaning how often the train departs a station, the train's operating style, cargo handling capability, and if the technology is ready for passenger use. These characteristics are identified for conventional trains, higher speed trains, and high speed trains in this graphic. The operating and design characteristics for magnetic levitation trains and hyperloop technologies are shown on this slide. It is interesting to note that all other train style technologies except hyperloop have similar design and operating styles. The hyperloop technology exhibits different characteristics regarding speed, operating style, and the ability to accommodate cargo. Looking more closely at the design characteristics for each technology, it is important to understand how the footprint and profile affect the surrounding environment, including the amount of right-of-way width needed. A typical section of each technology gives a view of the technology and its associated infrastructure required. A typical section is what could be expected to be generally built throughout the corridor. Some variation will occur within the corridor, but this is generally how the technology is expected to be built. The typical section for conventional and higher speed trains are shown on this slide. Unlike the conventional and higher speed typical sections, which are generally constructed on the ground, the technologies with the highest speeds require the vehicles to operate generally on bridge structures throughout the corridor. The typical sections for high speed and magnetic levitation trains and the hyperloop technology are shown here. It is important to note if other viable high speed transportation technologies are analyzed, similar information will be examined. Comparison of the technologies examined so far indicates several similarities and differences among the technologies. The similarities include how each technology operates on a fixed guideway or track of some kind and reaches speeds over 80 miles per hour. Each technology requires a similar amount of property for right-of-way and each needs stations for access to the system and maintenance facilities. Differences among the various technologies include the type of propulsion system and the number and frequency of stations. Other differences include the operating schedule and if the technology can accommodate cargo movements. There are other similarities and differences among the technologies, but this slide identifies the major components. In addition to analyzing several high-speed transportation modes or methods, there are many corridor possibilities these technologies can use to travel between downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas. Using previous transportation studies that examined corridors between Dallas and Fort Worth, the project team identified many possible alignments and corridors to analyze. In general, the project team identified alignments and corridors along existing transportation routes as much as possible to minimize the need to acquire additional property. Also, using existing transportation corridors would minimize impacts to homes and businesses. Each alignment and corridor option will connect the central station in downtown Fort Worth to the proposed high-speed rail station in downtown Dallas. In all, 43 distinct alignments and corridors have currently been identified for study by the project team. The project team is very interested to learn of other potential alignments or corridor options to study. If you know of a possible alignment or corridor not already identified, please let the project team know by providing your thoughts in the comment form. The 43 distinct alignments and corridors can be grouped into five families of options. These five families are generally identified as the Trinity Railway Express alignments, the Trinity River alignments, the Interstate 30 alignments, the State Highway 180 alignments, and the State Highway 303 alignments as shown on this map. 
The alignments generally associated with the Trinity Railway Express corridor follow the Trinity Railway Express for some length along their route. They leave the Fort Worth Central Station along the TRE corridor, paralleling State Highway 121 to Interstate 820. The alignments generally continue along the TRE corridor into downtown Dallas with an optional deviation departing the TRE corridor at State Highway 10 to State Highway 183, reuniting with the TRE corridor at its junction with Interstate Highway 35E in Dallas. Another alignment alternative follows Interstate Highway 30, leaving downtown Fort Worth before heading north along State Highway 360 in Arlington, then heading east along the Trinity Railway Express corridor into downtown Dallas. The next family of alignments generally follows the West Fork of the Trinity River between downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas at some point along their path. These alignments parallel the Interstate Highway 30 corridor, leaving downtown Fort Worth, before turning north to align with the West Fork of the Trinity River at the following locations. Near Beach Street in Fort Worth, just east of Interstate Highway 820 in Fort Worth, at State Highway 360 in Arlington, and just east of Beltline Road in Grand Prairie. Once east of State Highway 360, the alignment generally follows the Trinity River into downtown Dallas. The Interstate Highway 30 family of alignments generally follow or are near the Interstate Highway 30 corridor between downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas for a majority of their route. Some of the alternatives include minor and moderate deviations in Arlington and Grand Prairie to avoid potential impacts to the State Highway 360, and President George Bush Turnpike interchanges with Interstate Highway 30. There are also a couple of deviations off of Interstate Highway 30 east of State Loop 12. One such deviation runs parallel to the Union Pacific Railroad corridor north of Interstate Highway 30 and into downtown Dallas. Alignments that generally follow the State Highway 180 corridor for a good portion of their route are included in this next family of alignments. While most of these alternatives follow State Highway 180 leaving downtown Fort Worth, some alignments follow Interstate Highway 30 before joining State Highway 180 near State Highway 360. Heading east along State Highway 180 through Grand Prairie, these alignments diverge just west of State Loop 12 into a variety of alternatives, including paralleling the Union Pacific Railroad tracks into downtown Dallas. One alternative continues along West Davis Street and Fort Worth Avenue to Interstate Highway 30 into Dallas. Another alternative crosses the Mountain Creek Lake Dam heading southeastward to parallel the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Red Line to the Dallas High Speed Rail Station. The State Highway 303 family of alignments generally follows State Highway 303 and the southwest leg of the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Red Line between Fort Worth and downtown Dallas. On the Fort Worth end, one alternative parallels State Highway 180, leaving the Fort Worth Central Station heading to Interstate Highway 820 before following State Highway 303, while the other alternatives follow United States Route 287 and Interstate Highway 820 before turning eastward to align with State Highway 303. Once all high-speed transportation technologies and travel modes have been identified along with all possible alignment and corridor options, the process of evaluating all options will begin. The project team proposes a three-level screening process to pare down the vast number of possible options to select a few by the end of the first study phase scheduled to end in spring 2021. The process is depicted on this graphic. The process begins with identifying all possible alternatives. This is where we need your help. If you have an option the project team has not thought of so far, please fill out a comment form and let the team know. The first level of evaluation for the alternatives is to determine if the alternative meets the project purpose and the project need. The alternatives that meet the project purpose and the project need then move to the second level of evaluation. The second level of evaluation focuses on identifying any flaws which may preclude the alternative from being built. Finally, the alternatives deemed not to have a fatal flaw are then put through a more detailed and stringent third level of evaluation. The goal is to complete the third level of evaluation with a limited number of technologies and alignments or corridors to be evaluated in the project's second phase. 
The level one evaluation aimed at determining if the alternative meets the project purpose and the project need is divided into two evaluations. The primary evaluation determines if the alternative serves both downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas with a competitive travel time. The secondary evaluation in level one determines if the alternative is safe, reliable, and convenient, links to other high-speed transportation systems serving Texas, connects to existing regional passenger systems, and improves access to major activity centers in the study area. The level two evaluation process centers on determining if the alternative has any fatal flaws to prevent further development of the project. Various conditions are examined for each alternative, including proximity to environmentally sensitive areas, potential community impacts, technology maturity, compatible with the compatibility with existing infrastructure, and operational characteristics. The third and final evaluation level criteria include cost estimates, potential impacts to environmentally sensitive areas, other potential community impacts, and the ability to construct the proposed project in the future. As mentioned throughout this presentation, the project team wants to know your thoughts and opinions regarding possible alternatives. There are several ways you can provide your thoughts and opinions. One way is to use the electronic comment form found at www.nctcog.org forward slash dfw hyphen hstcs. A written letter may also be provided to dfw hyphen study, post office box 5888, Arlington, Texas, 76005. Additionally, there will be more public meetings scheduled in December 2020 and spring 2021. For additional information and or to sign up for project notices, please visit the project website at www.nctcog.org forward slash dfw hyphen hstcs. You may also request a presentation and or briefing to your organization through the project website. The project team would like to thank you for your time and interest. Please provide your comments and opinions through the options provided. Your input is welcomed and very valuable to the project's success. Thank you.